Hey, Scott Grove here from Imagine Grove, and uh, I just got a new camera, so hopefully the image quality is a little better, and I'm really looking forward to new cable. We have DHL, no, DHS, DLS, D, DHS, DSL, woo! We have DSL, and our internet's really slow, so consequently, I can't be doing live feeds, so I'm trying a new format here. to be filming sort of in a live format, a live format feed, I'm not going to be cutting out my mistakes because I just want to get this information out and editing is always the thing that slows things down. So in any event, here we go. Uh, finishing. So um, I just got back from judging the Northern Woods show in Minnesota and great show if you've never seen it in uh, Erie, Eden, Eden Prairie, Eden Prairie. And uh, it was a great show and some of the finishes are just spectacular. And uh, that was a, a, a big uh, element that kind of separated the really fine pieces from the well-crafted, except the finish was a little short. So I thought I might do a little discussion on finishing. So uh, I'm just finishing uh, a project here, a whitewash project, and I'm spraying a post-cat conversion varnish, which means you catalyze it, you mix it up, you got about eight hours to spray. And in any pre-cat or post-cat finish, there is a, typically a dry film thickness that you can't exceed, else it'll craze or check. And in this case, it's five mils. So how do you figure that out? Uh, first thing is you need one of these. These are a mil thickness gauge. This one is ML Campbell, which is the product that I spray, and it has these little notches on it. And um, what you do, and we'll do this right now. Let me uh, go over here, and hopefully you can see that there. Can you? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> so what you do is, I'm going to do it on this piece of uh, plastic here, but if you spray a coating down and then you take your mill gauge and you dip it in and you take it out, you see what's touching. So this actually, all four are touching. So I'm going to then go up to the next one, touch this, and nothing touches. So... It's right in between. Yeah, actually, I don't know if you can see that. Well, I don't know if you can see that at all, but you have to trust me. So what's happening is when I take this off, one, two, three, four, five, leave a spot. Six does not. So this means this wet thickness is six mils thick. Make sense? Okay, so from there, I'm gonna do some math. So we had a six mil wet coat. And it's 34% solids. And each finish has, has this, should have this uh, information. Uh, I know that the material I'm spraying is 34%. I'm um, thinning it 50-50 because I'm doing a, a very light wash coat. So that now changes to 17% solids. And if I take a, if I spray six mil wet coat, and at 17%, so that's roughly a 1.02 mil thickness dry. And I don't want to exceed five mils dry. So that basically means I can do five coats if I need to. I probably usually do about four, not to mention if I sand in between coats, I could actually probably get away with six if I needed to sanding in between coats. So there you have it. That's how you calculate uh, what your dry mill thickness is going to be. So if you don't know, if you've ever done this, I don't typically check this every single time. Um, I spray relatively consistent, so every once in a while I'll kind of break it out and I'll spray just to make sure I'm spraying about five mils. That's typically what I spray every time. Uh, sometimes a little thicker, sometimes a little thinner, depending on what I'm doing. But um, hope that helps. If you don't have one of these, uh, you know, check out ML Campbell. You can probably buy these online. My rep uh, just gives them to me. So, uh, but that's the tip of the day for finishing. Take my glasses off. So, hope that works. Uh, I'm off tomorrow to Maker Central 2019. Should be great. I'm going to be demonstrating in the Easywood Tool Booth. Um, and I'm going to be using our uh, Easy Inlay product. We're going to be inlaying Mother Pearl and Opal and uh, Power Abalone. In addition, we're going to be casting hands uh, at the Smooth On booth. We're going to be doing a hands. I don't know if you saw any of my posts, but I uh, did hands last year at Maker Central, or not at Maker Central, over the summer. 
Nick Zemetti, who's the promoter of uh, Maker Central, he came over to visit Jimmy Duresta and a bunch of guys, Paul Jackman and Graz, and a bunch of guys came in. We hung out at, at Jimmy's and I cast their hands in sign language and we spelled out uh, Makers. So at this year's uh, show, I'm going to be casting more hands. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, Matt Cremona, uh, Paul. No, I already got Paul Jackman. I got a bunch lined up. And a lot of the UK folks and we'll be spelling in sign language central so we'll then have maker central spelled out and I bronze those and what have you so that's kind of fun um, so stop by the booth I'll also be in the uh, Peter Sefton school uh, demonstrating over there my router base so we'll be doing some of uh, that too so I got a busy schedule and I'm presenting on ooh, Saturday or Sunday 11 o'clock on the main stage I'll be giving a talk on how to uh, make it as a professional uh, craft craftsperson and what that's all about. I've been doing that for 45 years and made it. Uh, so <laughs> made it through, right? Um, anyhow, so uh, that's good. I appreciate you watching. Uh, please uh, share and subscribe and all that stuff. I do have a website, imaginegrove.com, and there's a free uh, newsletter. That gives you design tips for craftspeople, so you might enjoy that. And that's pretty much it. We got a pretty busy schedule coming up uh, this summer. Let's see, after we get back from Maker Central, uh, I'm here for a week. Then we go do the Woodcraft show. Oh, I just made the cover of Woodcraft magazine. That's really exciting. So uh, take a look at that. Then from there, I teach at Mark Adams, and we're doing uh, Hooray for Inlay. So we'll be doing a week long of uh, alternative inlay which will be really, really fun. Looking forward to that. And we're doing my patriotic uh, cutting board, which is what Woodcraft was featuring me on. So pretty excited about that. Then from there, I drive to Arizona because I'm going to be delivering this job here, which is a, a bedroom set. Uh, kind of showing you there's, this is a chip carved case that's been copper coated, sort of armoire, and there's a couple of cabinets in the other room. So uh, from Arizona, we then go up to do Bryce Canyon and Zion. Then we have to race back to Chicago because I'm judging the Veneer Tech Challenge Award again for the second time this year. That should be really interesting. So if you work with Veneer in any way, consider entering. I know that uh, there's some, you know, there's some heavy hitters there, but they do have a new category for first time entries. So uh, it kind of gives you a chance, if you will. Uh, I've won the award four times. They made me a judge, uh, which is a, a great honor. And um, I, you know, encourage you to enter. I know there's a couple of categories that were really light, so you got good chances. And there's big money to win too. So um, take a look at that. I'll post the link for for that. Then let's see. Then from Chicago, we come home for Fourth of July, which is always great. Get to blow a lot of stuff up here. And then we go down to AAW in Raleigh, North or South Carolina, wherever Raleigh is, south of here, uh, for that. That'll be a good show. And from there, I fly to Vegas. I've got uh, three presentations. I'm doing uh, two on veneering, uh, a beginner and an advanced veneering uh, demonstration or uh, class. And then also a resin in wood, which should be really fun. Uh, I'll probably be in the Easywood Tool Booth there. And I'm also judging the Freshwood uh, contest there. That's for uh, high school and college students who are woodworkers. Uh, whoo, busy week, uh, or busy summer. And then from there I come home and then we're good. So uh, it's gonna be a crazy summer. I'm gonna really try to start posting every week and I hope you enjoy uh, all my adventures. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you hopefully next week in London. Okay, bye-bye.